Allen and you're live on Eco Watch. I want to start this program by saying that it is alleged that I, Sion Darling, is on a case to conserve the environment. But it is wetting after wetting. I don't allege anything. I will do something about conservation in this country and will bring these environmental lawbreakers to justice. But nevertheless, the people like it so. Director, run the first clip and show them why. What is it? Go around, go around, go around, go around. Hey, what's that? What's that now, bad boy? Drop that, drop that, drop that. Corner, you have in this bag? I go around, I have all I know. This isn't close. Officer, we are showing the speed. Are you in Boston to school? They can't tell me that. They were up for officer. We find our backyard with our one. And these are the hunting dogs. Hey, go on, I'll be good on the hunting dog. Oh, so short man, pick up that dog. Let go, let go, let go. Come, 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 come. My gosh, ladies and gentlemen. We can't even get sauce from one of those things for less than meat if we try to cook it. But, I believe it is not these guys' fault that they are able to catch these iguanas so easily, you know. There's a major problem happening in this country. The problem of habitat fragmentation. And it's going to come a more severe problem with this, with this new San Fernando to Point Fourteen Highway. This highway that is going to run through the swamps and rivers and beautiful forests of our southern land. But don't take my word for it. You know how they like to say Beyonce thing. I went to the big man himself. I spoke to him. Right, director, run the clip. What you in your car find clip? You had any kind of training before you come to get this job done? He went to the University of London, my friends, my boy went to the University of London. Boys, right up London, till you come from and ball and you go to the University of London. Find that clip for me here. My gosh. Oh, oh, you find the clip now? Well, don't waste time now. Run the clip for the people. Good afternoon, it's a pleasure to meet you. Alright. Um, well, we want to give the people of Trinidad and Tobago a bit of insight on the effect of habitat fragmentation on the wildlife, the local wildlife of Trinidad and Tobago. But we came to you as a man seeing what is going on here in Trinidad. We thought of the effects that the highway project is having on habitat fragmentation. I'd like you to give people a better insight on this matter because we you know your knowledge on what is really going on with this project is, is extensive to some point. Alright. Well, a highway is supposed to provide connectivity. But this highway is creating an extraordinary amount of disconnectivity. It's a nine mile stretch of highway that's going to run across the Rufuch Lagoon and it's going to be built on an embankment. The embankment is going to be between 8 to 12 feet high. Let me ask you a question. This embankment that they're going to build, right? Where is going to be and ferry coming for this well, embankment? It's a huge amount of work, but they've got to take 1.4 million tons of aggregate from the Northern Range. It's something you should be aware of. Well, that's a it's a huge cost to the Northern Range. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why they want to go so, so, so far with this, because when it's going to fragment that part that's of site. Yes. We've yes. Seen that's the first yeah. idea of fragmentation. You know, the water system, the village, yes, the, uh, yeah, the, the trees and so on. That's the first thing. Secondly, what about the, um, the, 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 the life which lives at the bottom, the lagoon, coming from one side to the other? How are you going to get the water from one side, one side to, the to the other? Now, there are hydraulic systems, but the hydraulic systems, for example, just gives you access at different points. You see? So does the, so the heavy part embankment alone can yeah. fragment an entire wetland? Well, the migration of one species from one side, side to the to other, for example, breeding is a big problem. And all those sorts of things. Yeah. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, everything nowadays is about this highway. And as you heard it from the man himself, 1.4 million tons of aggregate to destroy one habitat and to fragment another. Now, we can't wait on the government to do anything about this. You will have to do your part, and I will do my part. But I'm out of time for now. But there will be a rerun of this program at 10 p.m. Don't miss it. I'm Sian Allen, and together we will consume my time. Nice.
viewers and welcome to UCC News. I am Therese Alexis. And I am Communication Hazard. In today's headlines, habitat destruction. More importantly, the fragmentation of the San Fernando to Point Fulton Highway. Although there are multiple causes of habitat destruction, fragmentation is one of the most prominent. Fragmentation is the separation of a landscape into land uses that results in numerous small habitat patches left over for use by wildlife. Fragmentation causes small populations that can cause extinction. With small population sizes, there will be inbreeding depression, which can cause random genetic drift, which will in turn lead to smaller populations, hence extinction. Now we have reporter Paul Basi Mahombo discussing one of the consequences of fragmentation. Hi, Pulbati Mohombo here, reporting from Debi. Here we can see the vegetation that was once present is now lost due to the highway construction. An obvious effect of this type of fragmentation is the loss of species in the destroyed portion of the matrix. This is called initial exclusion as species with relatively narrow distributions are easily excluded. The area we are observing, previously a cane field, is now barren land excluding ground dwelling species such as snakes and woodlands. Back to you guys. Now let's go to our next reporter discussing another consequence. Hi guys, James Swarovski Swamp Water at the Golconda location. As you can see, the construction of the highway between the teak forest creates barriers and causes isolation between the two fragments. When patched fragments are initially formed, there's an increase in population size of species within an isolated patch. This causes population collapse due to limited resources and intense competition. Back to you in the studio! That was our reporter at the Golconda site. Coming live, we have Jason in the Monday side. Let's cut to Jason. Hi guys, you can see as we're here on the Mondesi side of the highway, this fragmentation through the forest went all the way to the end of the highway. And think about the mass amount of species being lost and the mass amount of species being displaced. If you look on this side here, you can see that the species are being displaced closer to human civilization, which are much more easy to be hunted and poached upon, right? This has caused serious problems for our species in Trinidad, the agutis, the iguanas. That'll be good. Back to you guys in the studio. On to some more promising news. Let's look at some solutions to these problems. In order to provide solutions, one of the main things is education. There are a number of organizations in Trinidad and Tobago that deal with educating the public, such as the Wildfowl Trust, Acerite Nature Center, El Socorro Wildlife Center, and the Emperor Valley Zoo. One reporter had the privilege of visiting the zoo to get more insight on their program. Protect and conserve local animals as well as foreign species at the Emperor Valley Zoo. We have different breeding programs, um, different animals are bred here. Um, in the past, ocelots have been bred, blue and yellow cores have been bred, and snakes have been born at the zoo. And when we have extra animals, so animals which have been bred at the Emperor Valley Zoo, we would release them back into the wild once they are fit for that purpose to increase the population. For example, animals which can be described as endangered in Trinidad and Tobago. We um, use different methods in order to educate the public, to educate children, to educate visitors about the importance of animals our local animals, our foreign animals, to all promote animal conservation. So one of our programs is the Zoo to You program. So if you all heard about the Zoo to You program, yes. it's a range of our petting animals at the zoo. For example, Patches the Ocelot, or Mustard the Burmese Python, Max the Boa Constrictor, which you all want to see shortly. Mm -hmm. The zoo has numerous breeding programs that reintroduce offspring of endangered species into that natural habitat. This is known as ex situ conservation. Since the construction of the highway will not be stopped, as the government sees many economical benefits such as creation of jobs, development of infrastructure, and accessibility, some solutions that work around the construction of the highway, or in this case, over it, is a wildlife overpass. A simple solution linking these two isolated patches. There we have it guys, UCC bringing you conservation news first. I am Communication Hazard. And I am Therese Alexis. Good night. Our cry is quiet and ever present. 
but it is drowned out by your so-called development. That monstrous thing that you call a highway. Fragmented or habitats, now we are displaced. It left us to find new homes and begin new families, all to make your traveling life a bit more easy. But what about us? We're on this earth too. You humans only think about what is good for you. Fewer tree frogs, ocelots, monkeys, or goaties. Consequences of the southern highway on Trinidad's biodiversity. Kubla Singh is trying to say this to you, and so am I. So please take time to listen to our ever-present girl.